Hello students, welcome to my online review session for biopsychology. Today I will go over chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8 for exam 3. In this section I will go over what is important in the slides. Here it's possible to know all the material from the lecture slides and about 7 questions will come straight from the book. I will go over some of the concepts that, may, if, that may, I may find difficult or confusing and I will spend time on uh, all terms. Well, let's get started. You need to know transduction and visual trans uh, transduction. And you need to know the retina and its anatomy. And then uh, you need to know the cellular structure of the mammalian retina. And I made a video for this section. Uh, click on the link description. And you need to understand uh, blind spots, and you need to understand the phobia. And here's my side note. And then you need to know uh, uh, cone and rod visions. You need to know that cones have phototopic uh, vision, and rods had scotopic vision. And here's my side note. And then uh, you need to know um, the convergence of rods and co uh, rods and cones, and you need to know that um, uh, cones have uh, low convergence and rods have high convergence. And here's my side note. And then um, another thing is that um, uh, rods and cones have different distribution. and you need to understand the spectral sensitivity and in conclusion rods and cones have different convergence one is the anatomy there is a different distribution of rods and cones and three they pass light differently and you need to know the Purkinje effect here's my side note And you need to know the visual transduction. And you need to know that um, uh, red, uh, rhodopsin. It is a pigment that is found in the rods. And evidence uh, that rod, rhodopsin, uh, rhodopsin determines what scotopic vision breaks up. And then here is the, my side note. That there's a strong evidence rely on rods to perceive things at night. And then here is the rhodopsin. So basically, it is a pigment found in rods. So basically, uh, the gist of this is that during nighttime or during the dark, uh, the rods turn on and it fires. And when the lights are on, the rods shut down and it doesn't fire. And then this section is the details on the process. And then you need to know that 90% of axons of retinal ganglion cells, and then you need uh, and you need to know that um, the lateral uh, you need to know the lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus. And now we're talking about the retinal geniculate stride pathways, and uh, I made all I also made a video for uh, this segment, and then you can link cl click on the description below. You need to understand the M and P channels of uh, the lateral geniculate nucleus. And you must understand that the uh, vision ha is a uh, retinotop, the division has retinotopic organization. And then you need to read this slide. And then you need to understand how we see edges. So uh, focus on understanding mock bands. And then uh, you need to uh, understand, you know, how it works. So basically, talks about the visual system creates more contrast, contrast enhancement. 
and then there's a consequence of lateral inhibition. And here is my side note. And then for lateral inhibition, I also made a video. Uh, you can also click on the description below and it, it will uh, link you right to that video. And you need to know um, Hubel and Musil's method for studying visual neurons. And, um, you need, and it's also uh, important to uh, understand the receptive fields. It is an area in which it is possible for visual stimulus to affect firing. And then you need to understand the slide. And here's my side note. And then I also made a video for the receptive fields. And then I think the video that I made will help you, you know, understand if you find this area, uh, this uh, section confusing. And here is my side note. And then uh, you need to uh, read this slide. And you need to know the differences between simple and complex uh, cells. Here's my side note. And you need to understand the columnar organization of uh, V1. And then this is also an evidence of uh, uh, seeing edges. And then, and then uh, these are uh, other explanations on understanding how um, we have this columnar organization. For this segment, seeing color, two questions will be asked uh, in the exam. So you need to read this section in the chap in the book. You need to know color constancy. And then here's my side note. You, you must understand the Rettnick's theory. Rettnick's theory is means that color is determined by which proportional light of different wavelengths that a uh, surface reflects. And you need to know what supports the Rettnick's theory. It is the dual opponent color cells. And the dual opponent color cells is that neurons that respond to differences in the wavelengths of light simulating adjacent areas of the receptor fields. And here is my note. So the perception is color constancy. The theory is the Rettnick's theory. And the biology, which is the evidence, is the dual opponent cells. The dual opponent color cells. And then uh, I also made a video in this segment. Uh, Dr. Kato actually talked about uh, it in a lecture. And in the video uh, is actually uh, she talked uh, the, it, she actually explains how the cortical mechanisms of vision and con and conscious awareness work, and uh, you can click on the video uh, in the description below. And you need to understand uh, scotomas. Scotomas is area of blindness in the contralateral visual field due to damage to the primal visual cortex. And then you must and you need to know uh, completion that patients may be unaware of the scotoma and then they may have missing details supplied by completion. And here's my side note. And you need to know uh, blind sight. Blind sight is response to visual stimuli without conscious awareness of seeing. And you need to uh, understand the possible explanations of blind sight, islands of functional cells within scotoma, direct connections between subcortical structures and secondary visual cortex, not available to conscious awareness. And here is my side note. You can pause the video and then look at it. And then also you need to read this slide. This is the summary of uh, 
of the functional areas of second and associated visual cortex. And then for sure, uh, this is going to be an exam. You need to know the differences between the dorsal and the ventral pathways. So the dorsal stream is the where pathway, the ventral stream is the what pathway, and you must understand uh, uh, what happens if you damage these regions. And you need to know prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia is the inability to distinguish among faces. And then I have a little side note over here. The loss of ability to recognize faces. And what we can tell is that facial features are processed uniquely. You can recognize their own face, family's face, or other people's face. And if you and then Dr. Kata will probably ask you this. Um, it is actually associated with damage in the fusiform area. This is uh, where faces are processed. And then you need to know that the, tac the tactor effect. So basically it is a phenomenon where it becomes difficult to detect local feature changes in the upside down face despite identical changes you know, being obvious in an upright face. So let's see. Let me just see if I can just copy this. New document, paste it, and then if you turn over, you can see a scary face. And then you must, uh, uh you need to know, um, a kinetop, uh, <laughs> I have a fun, I have a hard time pronouncing this, a kinetopsia, a kinetopsia. So it's a deficiency in ability to see movement progress in a normal smooth fashion. And you need to know um, evidence linking to the medial temporal, uh, middle temporal area with the motion perception. And here's my side note. And then this is uh, the things you would need for uh, exam three. Happy studying. Part two will come in shortly. And it's chapter 7.